good morning so so far still in storage I haven't moved across anyway okay, I guess you guys have done uh, practice with the lab scenario what we have explained okay. and we still left with a few storage scenarios okay we'll see today and from tomorrow onwards we'll start with the uh, other features of VMware like HA and DRS <coughs> okay so today what we will see there's <coughs> two small topics which are still pending on the storage side one is okay one is VMware RDM disk another one is Okay, we'll, we'll discuss briefly about these two. We'll not be able to do the 100% lab on RDM disk, but we'll try to show you how that can be configured and used in any customer scenario. Okay, so imagine you have an XI host and some SAN storage configured with configured with some iSCSI or fiber channel whatever the protocol that company has adopted so what you did you have created three data stores that is what we did right three different data stores and the same three different data stores so three different LUNs on the storage my bad and the same three LUNs has been allocated to this ESXi host. ESXi host as a as a raw devices and you formatted it and created three different data stores. <coughs> you call it as LUN 10, LUN number 20, LUN number 30. Okay, the same thing over here, the naming conventions is also same. So now, what you will do, you can create a virtual machine. Okay, and customer can access the virtual machine like this, and he can log in and save the data, retrieve the data, and do the business, what he wanted to do. Now, this VM will be saved into this, or this, or this, any one data store. Agree or disagree? You'll keep the virtual machine in any one of the data store, right? Okay. Now the scenario is something the data store size is the data store size is 2 TB, which is standard. The data store size is 2 TB. Now I got a server with the following requirement SQL server. One is server I need to build a school server C drive 40 GB D drive 100 GB D drive 2 TB F drive 2 TB D drive 50 GB H drive Just an example. This is the server requirement. If you look at the storage in the ESXi host, storage in the within the ESXi host, all the data stores are 2 TB. These data stores also allocated to other host, also, right? Also allocated to other host host 2, host 3, host 4, and so on. How many hosts within the cluster? 64 hosts. The same storage has been allocated to other hosts as well. Agree or disagree? Now, if I want to create this server, okay, 
how you will create the how you will allocate the storage your data storage 2 tb but you need two 2 tb drives Vivek, hello. I see there. Please unmute yourself and talk. Add, add more storage on uh, ESXi host. Add more storage onto ESXi host. Okay, and create a data store. The standard is two TB. I said. Okay. If you create a data store, you will lose some overhead. And if you create a VMDK on top of it, again you will lose some overhead. Okay. In such scenarios, in such scenarios, what you will do, as you said, we will create new two or three disk here. Three different. I'll not say disk. My bad. Lens. Forty, forty-one, forty-two. Okay, forty and forty-one are two TB, two TB, and forty-two is one TB. Okay, three here. So this, this, and this is satisfied. And C drive, D drive, and G drive. Can I create from here? So what you will do? Create a virtual machine, add three disk. When creating a VM, add a disk. One is 40 GB. Add a disk. One is 100 GB. Add a disk. Another one is 250 GB. These three disk you need to add while creating a VM. Okay. Now all the three disk will be created, and you will see three different VMDK files in the data store. Agree on this point? Inside the data store, you will see one folder or one directory with the server name. If you go inside, you will see some files VMX, VMDK1, VMDK2, VMDK3. Three VMDK files will be created because one, two, three local disk. That's it. Done. Now, these three, these three learns to whom I will allocate. To whom I will allocate? Can I allocate this to ESXi host or to VM? How? Okay. Why can't you assign it to VM? Because I want to mount these three, these three LUNs directly onto VM. Understood? But, but you cannot really allocate this, this storage directly to any virtual machine because because there is no iqn adapter or iSCSI adapter on a physical server like physical server you have iqn adapter or iSCSI adapter with the iqn number and wwn number for your hb adapter to that hb adapter you will allocate the storage but this virtual machine doesn't have any such configuration then to to whom you will allocate the storage there is no direct option to allocate it right you cannot really allocate a storage to virtual machine directly from sand storage that is the limitation understood yes. okay now what you will do you will create a t three different LUNs and allocate to cluster cluster in the sense this esxi this esxi this esxi and so on all the esxi servers just like what we did so far okay can i go ahead and do that simply i will go to my I will use the existing volume only. I won't create a new volume. I can create one more virtual disk, right? One more LUN, I can create it. 5 GB LUN. Can I create it? Possible? Yes. File and storage services, iSCSI. I have four different, I have four different LUNs here. Okay, let me, 
disable this. Delete fourth one. What you have deleted it. Okay. Now you see only you have three. 10, 20, 30. What I will do, I will go to new iSCSI disk. Can I use one of the drive? It's okay. I can use it right because they are not used in the back end. Learn 41 to SQL Server. Understood? 5 GB example or 2 GB. Let's treat it as a 2 TB. Or let's take 5 GB. Treat it as a 2 TB. And to whom I will assign the same cluster, the same cluster where I have created. It, how many hosts it has? In my scenario, in my lab scenario, I have six hosts. In real time, you will say 64 host. Next, create. Done. This one, right click, properties, LAN ID, 41, apply. Okay, that's it. Done. Now go to ESXi host, go to any cluster, any host, and configure storage adapter, select the adapter. And devices, devices, button, rescan. Master is gone here. How come? The whole sand storage is gone. What happened, man? Yesterday only we created it, right? Yesterday you practiced, you guys practiced it. Sorry? We practice on uh, development cluster. Even in, even in development cluster also it's gone, nothing. Let me try. It's working. Not connected. What happened to this? Sorry. Just a second. So, uh, be on mute. A lot of noise. Finding Refresh. Run. Strange. Other thirty dot fifty five. Quick check. No, we haven't allocated any duplicate IPs so far. Let me see. Sixty eight. Okay. This is expired for this machine. Have 145 days back. Okay. They are not connected to properties. Initiators, let me remove the other lab that we have. 
apply securing connections okay let's try and otherwise i need to reboot the entire lab that's a difficult part happens not a, don't worry because we are not playing with any real time storage it is Okay, let me do one thing. I'll, I'll I have removed these hosts from the RAM storage. Only these are left in the configuration. Let's remove this cam. And what is IP? 192.168.30.55, right? Should work, man. Let me do one thing. I'll reboot this host and see. I'll reboot one host. Let's see if it works. Let's see. <clears throat> so what I'm looking at is if I have a VM like this. Okay. Treat this as okay yes windows sql 2 treat this as my sql server this has three drives local already configured in local what are those three drives this has three drives locally configured vmdk1 vmdk2 and vmdk3 or vmdk0 1 2 one is 40 gb one is 100 GB, another one is 250 GB, which is already configured. Now, I want to allocate more storage to this. So what I can do, I can go to, okay. Now all the VMs are gone, I guess. Local host is rebooted, right? So wait until uh, this, is, this has come up. And log in where we are. Let me shut down this. Rebooted. Okay. Let's see here. 
it is already rebooted check it out it's not working man when spring still not working Not hundred percent sure whether this is a service or not, but I'm just trying. Path itself is not used. How come? Let me do one thing. I'll reboot this host. Okay, I'll reboot this storage server and see. <clears throat> okay, so it is up and running. Let's see. Log into the weekly recent trial. Scan it. It's working now. So storage services is not up and running. Okay. It should work now on this as well. <clears throat> and you will see other stores will come online in some time. And on the second host will come online in some time. On the third host, I will have to rescan it again. They will not discover automatically. The storage is rebooted. Let's scan the storage. Yeah. 
and go to data stores you will see the, those will be mounted in some time it will take little time to mount see it's mounted understood the culprit this is a lab environment so that is the reason why straight away they rebooted this and rebooted that if it is working well good otherwise i'll reboot my physical host as well but it's not the case with the real time remember okay now go back to the scenario what we are discussing on this particular host you have one vm which has three local drives these three are the local drives so already created under this and you need to create additional storage from san i have created one out of three i have created one 5 gb and allocated to esxa host only allocated to esxa host only let me show you that go to configure storage 41 this is the 5 gb run which i have created 5 gb not consumed or something yeah not consumed okay this 5 gb what i can do if i go to data stores sorry yeah go to any host i click storage add a new data store vmfs next you will see the 5 gb one understood this is what we allocated right yes okay now what i will do i will not i will not allocate this storage or this raw device to any esxa host i will not create a data store please do not create data stores escape okay now to which vm you want to attach this you have a sql server imagine this is your sql server which is already running on one san storage here in this case it is showing as a local imagine it is running on some san storage and from san storage it took c drive d drive g drive c drive 40 gb g drive 100 sorry d drive 100 gb and g drive 250 gb that is already allocated and vm is up and running now this drive is running with missing d e sorry missing e f h these three drives are missing one is 2 tb another one is 2 tb another one is 1 tb imagine that 5 gb is one of the 2 tb how to allocate that right click edit settings edit settings okay add a new device okay and you see rdm disk rdm disk hard disk if you say hard disk it will go and sit on one of the data store the data store you have to specify from which data store the the 8 gb disk should pick it up right specify you have to specify the data store somewhere here browse location you can specify where you want to keep the disk no this is not the case cancel i want to allocate disk rdm disk raw device mapping raw device mapping means you have a san lun which is allocated to esxa host let it be on any esxa host the vm is running okay imagine your esxa host is in a cluster and it has shared storage your vm is running on one host at any point of time you can run the v you can migrate the vm from one host to another host right that is a condition otherwise otherwise it's <clears throat> otherwise it's okay even if you allocate a raw device to a standalone vm or standalone esxa host but the one thing you need to remember when you are planning to allocate a raw device mapping or raw device mapped learn to esxa cluster please zone it correctly otherwise if a machine is moving across different host within the cluster it will lose the it will lose the san connectivity or else i can say it will lose the rdm disk connectivity 
understood what i'm saying is in short i have created one lan allocated to this host now i have a raw device here i never created a data store this raw device i can attach to this vm it will work but if drs next feature we are, we are going to discuss tomorrow or after tomorrow if a drs is trying to migrate this vm from this host to this host vm will go but there is this raw device it is not allocated here so vm will go but you will see d drive is missing here once the vm is migrated you will see missing d drive on the server that shouldn't happen so be careful so select raw device now it will show you that unallocated raw device of 5gb select ok so what it will do it will add new hard disk but directly from san but you cannot directly assign any storage from san to vm so we are using esxa host as a medium from esxa host you will mount this raw device to any specific vm that you call it as raw device mapping understood or any confusion hello yes i understand okay if you expand if you expand store with the virtual machine again again physical and there are compatibility physical virtual a couple of options are there let's understand store with virtual machine means store with virtual machine means the raw device is attached directly to machine but what is virtual machine some set of files configuration is on, on dot vmx file configuration is saved on vmx file okay now you have a server up and running tomorrow morning you rebooted the server vmx file what it will do it will read for vmdk file 1 2 3 and it will power on and it will leave this raw device as it is because vmware won't understand anything else other than vmdk file clear if it is a vmdk file vmware understands yeah i, I have a three vmdk files means three drives i need to mount to, to the customer that is only it will understand now in this case if you allocate the raw device if you allocate the raw device how how vmx file will come to know so what what vmware will do this raw device it will create a pointer shortcut pointer one vmdk file inside this vmdk file won't hold any data actual data is here itself but it is a pointer here so that every time when the machine is rebooted system will understand that vmdk vmdk file 1 vmdk file 2 vmdk file 3 these three are local also vmdk file 4 which is pointer to sand storage i will also mount that so system will remember vmdk file only that is the only reason the logic behind what they have done here see store with virtual machine disk will be stored with virtual machine and the physical mapping is here and compatibility compatibility mode physical and virtual if it is a virtual what happens if it is a virtual what happens independent independent lot, lot of options are there is virtual so if you say dependent dependent disks are included in the snapshot independent persistence changes are immediately saved permanently returned to the disk permanent is not affected by the snapshot independent non persistent changes to the disk are discarded when the when you power off your virtual machine are relevant revert the snapshot means in short in short there is a snapshot concept snapshot vmware snapshot concept in that it has lot of weightage 
when you are using rdm disk if you use physical if you use physical remember we will discuss this again in snapshots if you use physical here this raw device will not be included in the snapshot if it is virtual then this raw device will also included in the snapshot but there are three different options dependent independent persistent independent non-persistent the behavior of the snapshot and data holding and uh, reverting and restoring and committing the data will vary according to the option what we have here the disk mode that we will discuss in snapshots okay this is how if you click okay it will allocate one more disk but this is not the original windows machine or original linux machine here on the left side these are all tiny linux vms even if you click okay you will get an error completed strange inside you can you can mount one more disk that's it inside the virtual machine you'll have one more disk inside you will not see anything here because this is tiny tiny linux one right Okay, it will not block anyway. Graphics problem, anyway. You tested it right most of the time. So, but what you have to remember, you will see if you go to if you go to edit settings, you will see additional 5 GB disk is allocated here. Okay, that is one thing, and this is how you will allocate a sand storage sand storage disk directly to a VM using using option called RDM disk. Remember. Okay, and one more small topic is there, but we will discuss more in detail in more in detail in TRS. Okay, that is that is data store clusters. If you see data store clusters, there are no clusters here. But if you see data stores, a lot of data stores are there. How to create a cluster? Let's see quickly. Right click on cluster storage. Okay, uh, new data store. This one, man. Options will always vary. Data store cluster. option I guess I need to enable settings let me try options will always vary okay anyway let me try this option quickly I'll show you how to create a cluster we'll discuss more in detail in DRS only Okay, I'm um, my bad. No need to enable the DRS. Go to storage, storage, and I'll see storage new data store cluster. Okay always options will vary and normally you, you can you can keep it here or at least when here create a new data store cluster you should see here let me go to another GUI because this this is first time I'm using this GUI hello let's see Okay, 
will take two three minutes and then we'll close off just just to see yeah. creating a cluster is very simple just like your how you create a data store uh, host cluster production cluster and development cluster right similarly you can also create data store clusters Store. My bad. Same options. Fine. Go to here. Select the data stores. Select the storage. Here also. Select the storage and expand. You will see a lot of this data stores. And go to storage. New data store cluster. Here also. New data store cluster. Fine. What I will give broad underscore cluster production cluster. Don't turn on any DRS as of now. And use which cluster you want to use it? Production cluster. Next, you will see all data stores. Okay. We cannot use these to create a cluster those are not applicable to create a cluster select the ones which has sand storage next finish now you will see all the data stores you will see all the data stores here but you will see if you go to any host any host the data stores are there but look at there is a cluster added to here all these are under one cluster okay you can manage your storage under one cluster how you manage your host under one cluster similarly you have a storage cluster storage cluster which has all the three data stores that's it rest of the local rest of the other local machines in other cluster okay what i will do i will remove these hosts from the inventory okay because we are not going to test it anything on the development cluster now understood we're done with the storage storage practice right most of these scenarios from tomorrow onwards what we discuss is a simple options okay there's nothing to do with it but we need to understand how they are functioning you can play in the production lab itself so no need to keep any so that you'll see some clear lab okay now if you go to storage you'll see that's it one cluster all the sand sand data stores are one cluster fine the rest of the local data stores on each host host one host two host three these are individual data stores and this is cluster data store Consolidated size is 54 GB. Actually, it is 60 GB, 20 into 20, sorry, 20 plus 20 plus 20. Okay. Three data stores. And after the overhead, you'll see 54 GB is the total space for this cluster. We'll see how we how we can operate this cluster in DRS. And also we'll see how we can automate the migrations within the cluster. That also we'll see in DRS scenarios. So in short, today what we have seen, what we have seen today, RDM disk and storage cluster, how to create a storage cluster. These two things I have explained briefly, not 100% lab testing because testing is still pending for storage cluster that we can do. RDM disk, you need to deploy one real VM and allocate and log into the machine and see that disk is showing inside. Only that option I haven't shown you. You can log into the machine and check for a disk it will automatically shown as a local disk only. That's it. Nothing else is pending on the RDM side. Okay. Tomorrow, what we will do, we'll start with start with this topic. It will take around two, three days to cover it off. We'll discuss briefly 
what all the things that comes under picture when we are discussing about VMware HA. That we will start tomorrow. Fine. Any questions on this? Any questions on RDM and uh, storage cluster? Yeah. All right. Uh, let me stop here.